try to see some uh, uh, analogies with uh, with what I'm doing in, in groundwater, in, where you also have a, uh, a stochastic field in terms of velocity, which yeah. is due to the fact that the hydraulic conductivity is distributed in a in an erratic manner, uh -huh. and uh, and in this case, uh, uh, you know, the, the, we have also general quantities uh, like we we call it. The, the, the similar to the to the total energy that you consider, mm -hmm. which which can be eventually used uh, to evaluate the 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 attitude of the system of the ability of the system to to degrade contaminants, for instance. Okay. Yeah. But what we cannot do is uh, at least so far is to uh, map uh, the different uh, uh, mixing uh, that is occurring. Uh, in, in the space, because this 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 one depends very much very much on the what is yeah. happening uh, locally, yeah. Yeah. and uh, I think that here should be a similar uh, similar things because uh, with the the energy the the energy that you define is a global quantity, yeah. Yeah. and uh, of course locally you may have uh, very different behaviors and also the response of the system locally may be very different. And for if you think, for instance, that the contaminant or yeah. or or contaminant combine or two contaminants say uh, yeah. interacting, this is very much controlled by what is local happening locally. It all, it all depends on what you want to predict. Yeah. So here it's a large scale thing because you want to predict these path changes, which are large scale. So but, you can do the energy. But in terms of application, what was the yeah. importance of this uh, global, you know, quantity? Okay. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know if you unless you do it in terms of. Uh, but I I would guess if you want to predict, say, uh, very small scale features, and it could be, and you take an observable which would which would mimic, I mean, which mm -hmm. would measure this response uh, of the system for this for this small scale quantity. I don't see why it wouldn't work. I mean, in mm -hmm. particular, it's just a different measure, and you have a different you know you have a different ensemble, uh, a different kind of quasi ensemble because that's related yeah. to the other quantity. The, the point is that locally the yeah. PDF is becoming quite uh, complicated, so it, it, it changes yeah. uh, especially and uh, and it tends to be uh, to be bimodal, yeah. let's say uh, one or zero, so yeah. eventually presence or not. Yeah. yeah okay. So that's that may be a problem. So you have a uh, much more uncertainty. Yeah, that could be, but then also your predictability might be very limited. Huh? Yeah. So and that's what you see then. No, no, I was wondering if this this type of problem had, had been addressed in this field or if the, I mean. <laughs> if yeah, the, not 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 our groups because you know we're focusing on large so scale. Basically, moving from these global quantities, which yeah, is yeah. similar to the, uh, it's a different quantity we are using, but it's similar. Yeah. Moving to what, what is actually happening locally, yeah. because uh, for uh, let's say for reactions, it's important what is happening locally. Yeah, that's right. But here, I mean, this whole setup, you wouldn't learn anything about, you know, okay. whether a, uh, say, feature of an eddy would be near Japan or so, I, 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 like a small scale thing, yeah. right? You don't learn anything about this. But you could set it up to actually do that okay. by looking at, you know, this small eddy near Japan. You look at the PDF there, but it might be, it might be what? So it might, mm -hmm. it might be very, uh, very broad. And that sense, you, you wouldn't learn much probably from uh, assimilating observations in there. Because you have no predictability at all at that point. Yeah. The, the other point we have with the assimilation, I think it should be similar here, is that the quantity that can be actually measured is not the, is not the velocity, mm -hmm. uh, but it is the, the piezometric head, which is similar to the, yeah. to the elevation. Yeah. And the, the, the piezometric head is related to the velocity in a very... Yeah. Uh, in a, is, is a better. The, the, the piezometric head is... A, is much smoother than the velocity, okay. and yeah. this is due to the equation because the yeah, equation okay. is already. But you have to a free observation operator, I suppose, from the state vector to you know the observation. That must be there. Right? Uh, is that that's the other thing that comes in here? Yeah. What, what do you mean? Sorry, I didn't. Well, you have a state vector in your model. Yeah. Right, which you know is all the evolutionary quantities, all the dependent quantities, and then you have your measurement. So this is this piezo electric head also. But there must be mapping from that state vector to yeah, the, the observation. The point is that the, the mapping is easier. Is easier. I mean, it's relatively easy in the other direction. Uh, yeah, okay. But not in uh, because the 
because the the operator transforming the, uh, the 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 moving from the distribution of hydraulic conductivity to the piezometric head is a, is the Laplacian, which is moving yeah. everything. So it's there. Are, it's problematic for this reason. But I think yeah. that here there should be the same mm. because the elevation doesn't tell you. Uh, what you usually then do is you add variables to the <coughs> to the state vector. I yeah. mean, you have sort of Laplacian mapping. You add the Laplacian at that point also to the state vector. Yeah. And yeah. then you make the mapping. I yeah, mean, that's just what, what I would do. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem is that this, okay. And then become state vector becomes very big. But, you mm -hmm. know, but you don't have to integrate it in the model. Yeah, okay. Okay. So okay. There, there are, I think there are ways out to, to handle those kind of difficulties. But it would be nice to try it once on a sort of more, you know, a very different problem than, mm -hmm. than we do here. Okay, thanks. I want, probably you answered the question in the conclusions, but um, the maps of the PP, the predictive power, yeah. looks very similar to the map of the variance of uh, the C height that you show at the beginning of, of the presentation, which is somehow, yeah. somehow expected, probably. Yeah. But do you, did you, uh, evaluated this uh, relationship somehow or um, yeah well it, it, it's what I said you know you, you actually you have uh, basically the, the where you have the instabilities you have a mm. row right that basically there's where you have to observe that's also the reason why you see high is very good in C mm. right? okay. but um, from the um, apparently that but that's not the motivation for putting the boys here right because they wanted to measure also, you know, the main current and all kinds of other properties. So it's not that that, that sea level height variability motivates them to put this to the observation system here. Whereas here, it, it's indeed it's it's very much related. It's actually such that you'd have to have this large potential just the gradients. You have to this, the, here are the largest PV curves. It's all <coughs> covered on paper, and this is why you have the largest growth of the Barkovsky instability. So yeah, it's a, here it's it's much related. But it doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. If you have more instabilities, right, you have also biophonic instability in there, it would be different. Because then you, you, you might have sea level variability, you know, otherwise due to, say, biophonic instability, which would ne not be important for the transition as such, which are more biotropic. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this extension to, you know, two and a half layer is always uh, being on the yeah, agenda, yeah. but you know, we cannot do everything. <laughs> yeah, it was small. Did you did you try to? It is a very short one. Did, did you try to fit a, a model of or a distribution of probability to the to the empirical PDF of the energy? You mean just a, 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 a functional? Um, yeah, yeah. No, we didn't do that. Uh, yeah, this is typical, you know. Uh, How they bimodal type of uh, PDF? Uh, it's a bimodal. Yeah, but but with with. Uh, yeah, I mean you could fit a gradient system to it by potential, but it's not it's not a gradient system. So you have to, yeah, I, I, where is it? It must be somewhere else. Um, no, yeah, this one. Yeah, no, we never uh, fit a function of behavior because it's difficult to uh, uh, from um, say basic theory to have a sort of a priori. Guess on how it would look like. Yeah, because at, the, at time zero, the, at the beginning, there should be a bimodal uh, zero or one, basically, uh, when you start from, from one point. Yeah, but this is the equilibrium distribution, right? So That's it, it okay. Is the, uh, so, no, this would be, if you, this would be the, the, the solution of Potter Park equation in equilibrium, right, for this particular yeah. scalar, for T goes infinity. Yeah. Uh, but but the the for the Fokker Planck equation yeah. for the for Fokker Planck equation, the um, under certain conditions, you you can show that the the PDF is the beta distribution. Yeah, you can and of course, but the, but the, the for different solutions, the, 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 um, yeah, maybe it's, it's worthwhile to fit uh, some kind of uh, a solution. Yeah. To them. I never did that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because there's no epigoi. I, I can't guess what, what comes out. But, uh, yeah. Well, I have to think about it. Yeah. 
Okay. Good. Thank you. Maybe the one from the PC store. Come on, be brave. <laughs> I was just wondering whether, I mean, because these kind of analysis uh, is suited for uh, non-linear uh, dynamics where you have this chaotic behavior, right? Well, I mean, you have some mean, spreading, yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, if we have, uh, like, the, the, the system that uh, you, you are showing, I mean, like a, a channel between two islands mm -hmm. where the velocity is basically only in one direction and all, always the same intensity, more or less. Yeah. I mean, in this case, the, how would they predict a power result? Because in some way, I mean, this is very simple to predict yeah. in steady state forcing. Yeah. Uh, and so it should be one. That would just be one. Yeah, if there's a lambing of flow, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, also, also I mean, it can also be the ensemble would yeah. stay together. Mm -hmm. So it would just, uh, if you have a initial condition, it would be the same. You basically have, uh, even with a little noise, yeah. they would not diverge, so you would have to count that they would be one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so then, I mean, something that is yeah. concerned with Lake Gala, I mean, if you have a periodic force which is very strong, uh -huh. uh, I mean, what would happen? I mean, because, I mean, somehow the system will be driven by this periodic forcing and probably, I mean, you can have this yeah. kind of gyres yeah. that develop, but then uh, if you look at the sort of annual behavior, you yeah. will see that the, the system, I mean. Yeah. Well, it would totally depend on the time scale of, uh, say, the, uh, how the system diverge, the trajectory would diverge compared to the time scale of periodic forcing. So for instance, for tidal flows or so, when you, the tidal period is very small for you, long-term development for some steady ones, that uh, you can average right, in most cases. And so for, even for El Nino, where you have a seasonal cycle, and you have, uh, say, El Nino period is four years, you can still, you know, the, the dynamics is not, it's not that influenced by the periodic portion, unless you have what, what we call non-linear resonances, but that's, that's a very sort of special simulation. So I would guess for Legata it's different, because... Uh, I mean, I think it's uh, the yeah. other way around. I mean, probably the, 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 the annual portion has a yeah. longer time scale than the... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's different, yeah. yeah. So that's, that, that could uh, challenge it. <laughs> but you need, uh, you need indeed this periodic forcing there, because it's very central in the hunger, on the development of the flow. Yeah. I, <coughs> I think you can just do the, uh, the basic ensemble just with the, with the seasonal forcing. I mean, there's no restriction on how you define this. Uh, there's no, you don't need to do steady state. You just need to have the the natural spreading of the system under the given portion, and that will give you the kind of what's good to hear. I think that that's some. Yeah, I don't see that. That's a restriction. And I can. Yeah, just another one. Uh, I mean, when do you show the data? I mean, the comparison uh, of at the very beginning, the first part of the talk. I mean, yeah. you, you show the comparison between data and uh, the model itself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You mean this picture here? Yeah. I mean, I mean the, the comparison seems very nice. But I wonder, I mean, in this case, do you have a, 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 a constant forcing or a, a yeah. variable one? Constant forcing. Constant forcing. Yeah. But so, did you align uh, sort of uh, the model results? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you align it, you know, you put here uh, 145, you put a low, and then you just look at, you know, the, the cycle here. And actually, in the paper here, there's another cycle, the whole, the whole time series is there. Mm -hmm. And you can actually, there's, there's several of those which match very well, but okay. not all of them, of course. Yeah. But you still see that you have this combined, where you have high path length combined with increase of normal position. And that's already, I think, for say the comparison on I mean that's already very nice. Yeah. But that shows yeah. you that you have it's surprising char yeah. characteristic features. Yeah, it's surprising. I mean uh, I mean if you look at the community of oceanographers, um, they don't you know they, they still think everything is caused by rotary waves. And they have linear theory to have a rotary wave coming in and then they, they show that the rotary wave, you know but if you look at the, the how the rotary wave can change a jet, it doesn't do anything. So there's actually papers on there also that there cannot be rotary waves on there. But then this whole nonlinear framework in terms of you know this instability and, and that the idea that you can get they uh, they 
very irregular type of behavior without any time dependence. Forcing is already difficult to get across <laughs> in the community. Uh, but it's just the instability is common. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the nice talk. Um, I have a question. If you understood correctly, basically you removed the, the uncertainty associated to the to the model, no? Because basically the truth was extracted from one of the realization of the same from the same model, yeah. and then you are looking at the the value, the added value of the observational data. But basically, if you have a, a complete different model, yeah. and then you can have different biases or yeah. epistemic uncertainty, yeah. can still this technique be used? Well, and then, it we becomes a, to then it becomes a little bit more difficult because then you don't know where the, uh, say, particular power change comes from, or, or lack of change exactly. comes from when the model, uh, and the model is different, or you could actually take the, the actual observations also. Yeah. And if that is a big mismatch, yeah, then uh, you, you don't have any predictability. So that is, that is of course a, a limitation. You, so you can do it in this methodology basically only within one model context. Okay. Yeah. But you can do it in, 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 in many more sophisticated type of models. I mean, here we do a shallow water, but you could do it basically when you take data from a, say, a, a very sophisticated ocean climate model. The only thing is you have to do the ensemble, which is then you know, more. So in theory, the ensemble could intensive. be a, a large ensemble of a regional kind of model yeah, exactly. and models and then exactly. try to apply this as simulating. Exactly, and then you might actually uh, simulate even the real observations because then okay. you're closer to... You know, and then at the end of the story you, you could weigh the different yeah. uh, the different climate models and saying which is the best or not that, su that, suited. Okay. You know, they could do that, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it's not easy because, you know, you yeah, yeah. have to generate. <laughs> yeah. It's in principle easy. Yeah. Yeah. Practical, it's quite Practical easy. Yeah. Here, just uh, the second floor in the octagon, uh, I mean, just below the direzione. So it's a sort of building. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, stop by if you want, and you know, I'm, I'm yeah, there yeah. most of the time. Okay. And the, the, the email? Do you have the, your email? My email? Uh, yeah. I, I can. Marco, uh, yeah. Okay. Marco, my name h, h dot a dot Dijkstra at uu dot could you please to share the PDF the presentation because yeah. there are some nice papers that could that's be. Fine. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, yeah. I make a PDF and uh, you put it somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So I will send uh, an email there with uh, all the contacts. Thank you. Yeah. yeah uh, the uh, reference uh, is more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.